Hey everyone, I'm FM Greeno. Welcome along to episode 26 of the Greeno Tour. This is my FM21 European Journeyman, where I'm currently in charge at Budapest Honved. Today, we have a big decision to make though. We were last together for that 3-2 defeat up at Debrecen, which is a bit of disappointing, but not entirely unexpected. We followed that up with another defeat, this time against Diosdjur. And at that point, that was six games without a win in the league, and we were hauled into the boardroom. They were not very happy with things, but I managed to talk them around and gave us a bit more time. Didn't put any points, targets on or anything, just said, you know, things need to improve. We then had our Hungarian Cup quarter-final, where we beat Kaposvár 4-0 in the first leg. We actually lost in the second leg, but we did change quite a few players for that. Sandwiched in between that, we played ZTE at home and could only get a one-all draw. They equalised pretty late on, so that was a disappointing result. We led to Pushkash, who are still really struggling. And uh, Fran Petkovic came into the side and scored four. So it... <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't bad. He's kind of cemented his place in the team ever since, to be honest. Uh, so we won 5-1 up there. Followed that up with a 2 all draw against City rivals MTK. Again, very, very late equaliser there. Budafok. We won this 2-1. And if we take a quick look at the stats of this game, look at this. We had 23 shots, 12 on target, an XG of 3.95. Only won 2-1, and it was us this time who were leaving it late. Eppel, who'd come off the bench, scored a penalty in the 82nd minute, and then Teller scored a very, very late winner in injury time. So I'm not quite sure how we didn't <laughs> win that by more. We should have done. Our last game, we went to Fehavar. Um, did okay in this game. Um, we were probably second best in terms of the stats, but to come away from there with a two-all draw is not a bad result. Now, all the while this has been going on, we have had a few more clubs approach us for interviews. So um, I think I may have mentioned before Esbjerg in Denmark, um, who we'd turned down earlier in the season. But this time we had a, a job offer from England. So if we go and take a look, Luton Town have approached us. So as we did previously, when we moved to Homved from Sterling Albion, we're going to take a look at a comparison between the two sides and let that inform our decision. So if we take a look here at Homved, where we are currently, we've invested a bit of money in the training and the youth facilities, and they are both great. Reputation is two and a half star, and finances are okay. If we take a look, we're just about in the black, just over 800,000. Wage budget is 84,000. We're spending about 10,000 less than that. So overall, things aren't too bad in terms of the setup of the club here. Um, as we know, our squad is okay um our best player probably molnar who's on loan from benfica and they're definitely not interested in selling him we might be able to get him on loan for another season everyone else is relatively average Chanyi, i think has got potential to get a lot better he's only 22 years of age just made his debut for the hungarian national team i think ashvani the goalkeeper similarly uh oh he's wanted here who by by verda bremen well there's an indication of his potential He's only 22, which is young for a goalkeeper, and has had a lot of good improvement here, as you can see, over this season. Other than that, I think the squad is relatively average. Hulak, I guess I like. He's a, a decent young player, although that natural fitness still worries me. He's only 18 years of age and has been doing pretty well. Outside of that, there's not a great deal in the first team squad to be excited about. Youngsters-wise, we have mentioned before, we go into the development center a couple of these uh, youngsters have got a lot of potential but they're some way off first team ready i guess hanyesh is probably the closest he's improved like incredibly this season a center back but he's not going to come in and dislodge um the likes of hulak or barat or the italian lad bogliano so yeah there's potential but nothing really that's that's going to excite me too much here So if we compare things to how they look at Luton, so in terms of the training and youth facilities, training facilities are only good, so that's half a star less than we have at Homved currently. Youth facilities also great. 
Finance is okay. It's a three-star club rather than two and a half star. You know, it's a championship side currently sat in 14th. Media prediction was 20th, so they are punching a little bit above their weight. I think their uh, their manager was poached to go to a bigger job, which is how this job came available. So if we take a look at the league table here, you can see Luton sat in 14th place in the championship. 15 wins out of their 43 games. Overall on 54 points. There's only three games of the championship season to go. So they're, they're going to finish there or thereabouts, no matter what happens, I suppose. Nowhere near the relegation zone. Quite a distance away from the playoffs. Just a good, solid mid-table finish. For a team that was predicted to finish 20th in the league, you can't complain at that. One thing worthy of note here in the player stats, Joe Morell has got the third best rating in the whole division. So he obviously has a lot of blanks here that we you know, can't see right now. But valued at £11.5 million, wanted by Glasgow Rangers. Got 20 caps for Wales. He looks like a really good little player. So someone you could probably build a team around if he's hanging around. No one else in amongst this little lot here. Um, but if we look here, the Skybet Championship is the 16th most reputable league. I think the Hungarian First Division is in the mid-30s. So that's a definite step up in terms of, of reputation anyway, certainly. So let's take a little look at Luton's playing squad. Um, there's quite a few players valued at a lot of money, certainly worth more than any of the players we have at Honved currently. So Peli Ruddock Mpanzu. Again, we can't really see too much about him, but he's a 29-year-old central midfielder again, valued at almost £12 million. Joe Morell we've seen. Tom Lockyer at the back, 29-year-old defender, £9 million valuation. Looks like he's going to have some decent stats in a lot of the areas where you'd want him to. Who else have we got here? James Bree, a right back, valued at almost £8 million. Luke Berry, he's a little bit older, someone we might want to be thinking about moving on after a, a season or so. Reese Devine, a left back, 22 years of age, valued at £4 million. Looks half decent. So I think there's some really good players in amongst this team. If we go back to the club info screen one thing i did notice they're valued at nearly 75 million pounds on red about six million in terms of the job offer itself well it's a little bit of an upgrade on what we're at at Honved. Honved are paying us 2.7k a week luton have offered us 3.6k so that's a 900 pound a week pay rise transfer budget of 4.7 million wage budget of 250k a week i've been through and totted up roughly uh, I think they're paying out about 230000 a week at the moment. Obviously, we're very near to the end of the season, and there's a few players out of contract. So I think you can probably take another twenty k off of that. So, yeah, probably around two hundred and ten k of what they're committed to next season. So it gives a little bit to play with. Uh, not a huge amount by championship sta uh, standards, certainly, but enough to have a little, uh, little mess around with in the transfer window. I think overall, looking at the big picture, it feels a lot like when I was leaving Sterling to go to Homved. It was just a definite upgrade, and I think this is pretty much the same. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to see if we can negotiate the money up a little bit. Maybe we'll ask them for four years. They're only giving us a one-year contract until the end of next season, but that's not too much of an issue. Um, let's see what they think. No, they don't want to give us that much. Hmm. Okay, looks like we're taking 3.6k a week. We don't want to upset them too much. So let's take that. Exit the talks. And it looks like we are packing our desk at Homved and moving to Luton. Luckily, we can hop on the uh, the EasyJet or the Wizz Air directly out of Budapest. <laughs> we're only a few miles away from Budapest Airport we're at Homved. So easy enough to get over to Luton. So... They've paid £30,000 in compensation for me. I have kicked a couple of the, the staff out. Obviously, I'll uh, take a bit more of a look at that over the summer. But let's see what we've got it here to deal with. So, like we said, overall, they were predicted to finish 20th. A little bit of uh, silverware in the history. Won the championship in 1982. The League Cup, or the Milk Cup, I think it was known as at the time, in 1988. League One, League Two. The Vanarama National, of course, if you remember, uh, there was a season where Bournemouth were on minus 19 points at the start of the season. 
And Luton, I think, had minus 30 that season. Bournemouth managed to survive and stay in the league. Luton didn't, so they went out of the league. So they've done really, really well to get back up into the championship in quite a short period of time. Well, they won the Papa John's Trophy and the old third division south. So currently at Kenilworth Road, just over 10,000 capacity, but they are building a new ground, which they'll be moving into very shortly. That's going to be about a 20,000 seater, I think, or 18,000, something like that. So that's going to be a definite upgrade. This is kind of the way that they're suggesting the team is going to look. That's not bad because that's one of the ways I really do kind of like to play. Well, they have Conor Mahoney in their squad too. He's an ex-Bournemouth player. I've actually got a picture of my youngest daughter with him somewhere. So that's nice to see him at the club. So here's the, uh, the club vision. So they want to develop players using the club's youth system. Well, that should be all right. They have decent youth facilities. I did notice their youth recruitment isn't the best. But again, we've got plenty of time to work on that before the next youth intake is coming in. They want to work within the wage budget, sign players to sell for a profit, and two-year contracts for first-team players. All very, very easy. Skybet Championship, they're not judging this season, obviously, because we've only got three games left. They want to grow the club's reputation and continue to be an established Skybet Championship team. So no huge ambitions there. So it's going to be quite difficult to uh, fail against them, I think. Although, <laughs> if we do the way we did at the end of our time at Homebed, we might still be getting called in for some meetings. So we, we're going to have, yeah, we'll have a press conference to meet the media and all that kind of stuff. And here we are. It's officially con confirmed. Reno takes charge at Luton. Well, now we're at the club, we can take a bit of a closer look at some of these better players in the squad. So Joe Morrell was touted as the best player. And I think he looks decent. No, no enormous numbers everywhere, but pretty solid all round. So I like the look of him. I think he's going to be a starter for us in midfield, certainly. Young goalkeeper here, Ainsley Pears. I mean, he doesn't look too bad, does he? Not great, but good enough. I don't know why he's only valued at 500 grand. He looks better than that. Lockyer, the centre half. That looks like a lockdown haircut to me. Um, but again, he looks all right. Not in a lot of pace or acceleration, but I think in most of the other areas, you'd want him to have strength. He does. Like the look of him. Oh, so we've got here Reese Devine, left fullback. Probably a slightly better attacking than defending fullback, but I like the look of him. Who else have we got that's any good here? Got Connor Mahoney. I think he looks decent. Crossing of 16, dribbling 14, tricky winger. Yeah, he could do a job for us, I think. So yeah, so I think there's, there's something for us to work with here. Obviously, we have the summer coming up, only three games of the season left. So it gives us a chance to have a look at the squad in a couple of games and then think about what we need to do in the transfer window. Well, in terms of those games that we have got left, it's not easy. We have Nottingham Forest in just four days' time. We have them, we're playing them at home, but they are second in the league. We then travel to Bristol City, who sit in fourth, and finish up the season away at Birmingham, who are kind of mid-table 13th. So that's the game we're going to come back for. I'm going to use these first two games to take a little bit of a look at the squad, try and work out a tactic that kind of works with what we've got, and then we'll come back and have a look at how things are set up for that Birmingham game. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Obviously, no match action to discuss, but certainly eventful enough. I think it was probably the right move to make. Uh, I just had a kind of feeling that my time at Homved was coming to an end anyway. Having been hauled in for a couple of board meetings, they weren't very happy with things, you know, with how things were going. And with the money that Ferenc Varos and Fehavar were spending compared to what we could spend, I just didn't see a way that we could really take things any further than we already had. But yeah, it's a, it's a period of the save I will look back on with some fondness. We had some great results that first season getting them from 11th up to second in about 20 games was pretty remarkable and i think even this season they, you know they're going to finish in a european place so solid enough but if you have enjoyed this please drop a like on there for me and of course if you've got any comments about the move i've just made or the series as a whole i would love to see them below and of course if you're not yet subscribed to the channel please consider doing so there's plenty of room on the greeno bus for you all it just remains for me to thank you for watching, and we will see you soon for our first match with Luton. Bye for now.